In this video, I'm going to answer the most frequently asked questions about kilns from beginner potters. Hi, Marie here, back with another informative video for you. Whether you're buying a new or used kiln, there are basic things that you want and need to know to get the best results from the beautiful pottery that you just created. When you're getting your first kiln, there's always a lot of excitement and a little nervousness. With that said, some good knowledge will put your mind at ease. I put together a list of the most frequently asked questions about kilns from beginner potters. My advice comes from personal experience, other kiln owners, and the very helpful and informative technicians at SCUT. My first and most important question is, do I need an electrician to install my outlet? Yes, I most definitely recommend an electrician to make sure you have enough power and the proper outlet. You want to have someone with experience to check out your breaker box and hook you up properly. When it comes to electricity, you don't want to take a chance, so it's best to have an electrician come out. Do kilns use a lot of electricity? This would depend on the size and age of your kiln. Larger and older kilns will use more energy. A kiln with thicker bricks will be more efficient. This kiln is an 818 with 3 inch brick, which costs $3 for a bisque and $5 for a glaze firing at cone 5. Should I get a used or new kiln? Kilns last for a very long time. Most kilns are built well and the parts are pretty easy to repair. You can get a used kiln for a good price. For more information on what to look for in kilns, you can check out my article on choosing a kiln. I left a link for you in the description below. If you're thinking of getting a new kiln, I think it's worth the investment. You would have the newest technology, they're very easy to run, and more energy efficient. If you decide to buy a new kiln, you can check out my article on buying a kiln for facts, features, and what to consider. I left a link for you in the description below. Can I use my kiln right away? If it's used, you should use a pyrometric cone or witness cone for a bisque fire first. Fill your kiln with the shelves and posts only, then bisque fire. If your witness cone is correct, then you can begin using your kiln. If it's not, then you can make the proper adjustments before firing her up. If it's a new kiln, first you must do an 04 bisque fire with the shelves and posts only to burn the oils off the elements. This process increases the life of your elements. You also want to do a witness cone to make sure that the temperature is accurate. With a brand new kiln, the temperature can be off also. Do I need to vent my kiln? There are several vents that you can get depending on your needs. If there's little to no ventilation and your kiln is larger and giving off too much heat for the area, then yes, you need an overhead vent that will draw the fumes and heat out of the kiln area, but it will not bring oxygen into the kiln. There is also a vent you can get for the bottom of the kiln. This vent will draw fumes out and bring oxygen into your kiln, but it will not be effective in drawing the heat out of the kiln area. So if you have fresh air coming in your kiln area, you should be fine. You don't want your control panel to overheat. If the control board reaches over 160 degrees, it'll shut off during your firing. You want to keep the kiln area below 100 degrees during firing. If I have no vent, should I be concerned about the fumes in my kiln area? If you have fresh air coming in and never hang out in the kiln area, you should be fine. Most of the pottery burn-off occurs between 500 and 1,200 degrees, which will last about three to five hours, depending on how slow and big your kiln is. 
Keep in mind, the fumes will still be coming in, but at a much slower rate. I have the garage door a quarter of the way up and never smell anything in the house. Just make sure your kiln area is not in your living area. Do I need a stand? If you don't have a stand, get one. Or put something like cinder blocks or something that isn't flammable underneath. You don't want your kiln to be on the ground. Even if it's on concrete, the concrete will crack. And you want adequate airflow underneath your kiln. So definitely get a stand. Should I keep all the peeps in the holes or not? That's a great question. To peep or not to peep? I was told many different ways to do it. Then I was told by several SCUT technicians that if you have a vent on the bottom, then yes, you should keep all of your peeps in. If you have no vent on the bottom, then you should keep the top peep open throughout the firing. This allows the fumes and fine particles to escape so they don't settle back onto your pottery or the elements. It also brings oxygen in and burns cleaner, which helps gives you more vibrant colors and better results. It also increases the life of your elements because the fumes and fine particles aren't settling into the elements. If I keep the top peep open, what about thermal shock? The kiln is powerful enough to handle one peep out, but not all of them. So the golden rule is to keep the top peep out at all times. When the kiln says complete, are the elements still on? I still see glowing in my kiln. When the kiln says complete, it's still glowing inside, but not because the elements are on. Your pottery is still glowing like pieces of lava. The elements have turned off and your kiln is slowing down naturally. Unless you program it for a slower cooldown, then the elements will turn on to assist in cooling it down slowly. Oh, this is a good one. Can I lift the lid while the kiln is still hot? Technically, Yes, you can. Should you? No. Besides the sheer curiosity, there's no reason to lift the lid. Since you can't do anything with the pottery until it's cool, leave it alone. If you do lift it up, you take a chance of ruining your pottery, causing thermal shock and crazing. I know how badly we want to get in and see our finished product, but it's best to wait until it's 125 degrees or even room temperature. How long does a firing take from beginning to end? Now this will depend on several things. How big your kiln is, how thick your bricks are, if you've programmed your kiln for a slower fire or a slower cool down. This kiln takes around 36 hours from beginning to end. It's a smaller kiln, but it has the three inch bricks. Figure at least 24 hours. And remember, for the best results, don't open until 125 degrees or room temperature if you can. Is three inch brick better than two and a half? Two and a half inch brick does give you more space inside the kiln, and it also costs less. The three inch brick is more energy efficient, cools down much slower, which is always a plus in pottery. And the control board is more protected from the heat of the kiln. If the box hits 160 degrees, your kiln will shut down. You lose more space with the three inch brick, and it does cost more. With that said, I would still go for the three inch brick because the pros do outweigh the cons. Can I get a touchscreen controller? You definitely don't have to, but if you're new at working with kilns and you want the luxury of the 21st century computer touchscreen and it's in your budget, then I would say get one. I love mine. The SCUT technicians have access to my kiln data and they help me with any troubleshooting. You can update it and it's easy to program. 
the computerized programmer also gives you more control over your firings. And it's very simple to use. Do I need to use a witness cone all the time? Witness cones, also called pyrometric cones, play a very important part in the accuracy of the temperature in your kiln. Even if you have a newer kiln with the computerized touchscreen, you still want to make sure that it's accurate. So you still need to use the witness cone, but not as often. Definitely use them from time to time to ensure your kiln is running properly. If you have an older kiln, yes, you should use them more often. An older kiln should be checked at least every four fires. Some potters use them in every fire. You should also use witness cones to check the temperature of each shelf. Should I slow, medium, or high fire my pottery? Medium fire is the most popular and works fine with most clays and glazes. But slow firing is the best way to go. You can high fire, but it's not recommended. It doesn't allow time for your glaze to cure properly. Do I have to use kiln wash? If you don't have top-of-the-line kiln shelves or use cookies, then I definitely would use kiln wash. If you use cookies, make sure you use cone 10 clay with heavy grog. They last longer and shrink less with the heavy grog. These are my shelves and they still look pretty good. I also have an article for you to read on protecting your kiln shelf from melting glaze. I left a link for you in the description below. This is how well the cookies protect your shelf from melting glaze. If I didn't have this cookie, I'd have a really hard time getting all that glaze off of my shelf. Even with the kiln wash. Should I be concerned about cracks on the bottom of my new or used kiln? Very good question. Cracks are normal on the bottom from the heat expanding and contracting. You should be concerned if the cracks go all the way across the bottom or if they go all the way through the bottom and you can see light through the bottom. I have a few cracks in mine and that's totally normal. Never put anything on the bottom of your kiln. The air needs to flow through. So a half an inch post will give it enough air to flow through on the bottom. Should I put a hold on when I glaze fire? You don't have to, but if you want to make sure that the temperature is even throughout your kiln, you can program a five minute hold at the end of the firing. It also helps the glaze cure. If you don't want to put a hold on, you can slow fire instead. Does the glaze have to totally dry before I place it in the kiln? It is best to allow your glaze to totally dry Kilns hate moisture. The less moisture in your kiln, the longer your kiln will last. How often should I vacuum out my kiln? I would recommend after every bisque fire. The reason being, there is clay dust floating around from the bisque fire. And you know it because you're wiping off the fine dust particles from your bisque ware before you glaze. After spending all that time creating, decorating, and glazing your pottery, it's totally worth taking five to ten minutes out to vacuum and increase the sex. <laughs> After spending all of that time creating, decorating, and glazing your pottery, it's totally worth taking five to ten minutes out to vacuum and increase the success level of all the pottery in your kiln. I hope this has helped you to run and maintain your kiln to get the best results on your pottery that you've crafted. Don't forget to check out Pottery Crafter's website where you'll find more helpful information on kilns and also tips, tools, and other information about pottery making. 
When you like, subscribe, and watch other videos, you support this channel and help me to make more videos like this. Head on over to this handle making or how to bubble glaze video. If you do, I get to play with more clay. Let's stay dirty.